Welcome folks, R30 Hadron here, and I'm currently looking at a uh, sort of a redstone contraption I've been working on. Uh, what I wanted to do is create a somewhat compact way to stick together a large number of AND and OR gates, all into one nice package, and I believe I've done that. Uh, this is about as complicated as the idea gets. It's a large number of pistons, gravel, repeaters, uh, signs. <laughs> uh, it's just sort of an interesting idea. Uh, so, knows how to deal with each of these different inputs and work through that. Uh, it's very similar idea to my 4-bit maze, in a way. Uh, if you remember that from a couple of weeks ago, ended up uh, how that ended up working is that each of the buttons connected were connected to a T-flip-flop, which then ended up changing the state of the maze. There were about 16 different states, uh, and one of the states was where you started, one of the states is where you ended, and it just kind of worked from there. Um, and this is a similar idea. Uh, it has a particular way that it works for each state of the levers, and just works from there. I uh, have two other ones that I ended up making, just sort of perfecting the design. Uh, in this case, the wood stays there, does not move up and down like the sand does. And, again, just kind of state of that redstone hood lamp, it just kind of depends on how the levers are. Same thing with this one, just with a little bit more... This time with uh, three different... Uh, four inputs with four different things it's testing for. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So what I'm going to try to do is explain what it does, how it does it, and go from there. So the first step with this is this particular website uh, that I ended up finding and I used this quite a lot when I was making my 4-bit maze. Uh, it's a Carnog map. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation there. Uh, what it basically does is it takes a test case table, or truth table, with the four different inputs, or you can do three or two, like that. Uh, and the four inputs, we take it and decide to set it with different inputs, like so, say, uh, I don't know, let's do that. Uh, it will actually give you a simplified indication of what it actually is testing for. So in this case, with these on, not A and not C, or not A and not D, or not B and not C. Taking those three different cases and basically putting them in a giant OR gate. Uh, second idea is so sort of emulate that. Let's go ahead and do... Hmm, something like that, maybe? I like that. We'll do that. Uh, yeah, we'll do this one. So, I'm just going to write it down for my benefit. Plus A. So, the little underscore on top indicates it's a not. Uh, the plus here indicates it's an or, and the absence of any operators indicates it's an and, so I'm just going to put that off to the side. So, so a bit of audacity there. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and create one of these just quickly. So what we're going to need you're going to need some redstone torches, some redstone, repeaters, uh, levers, some stone. I'm using sand. You could use gravel if you wanted. Redstone lamp to indicate the output. Some obsidian to block the pistons when we don't actually need the pistons to move. Some pistons, some wooden planks, or you could just use stone again. I'm just using it for contrast. And some signs. So, to start off with, we need... Since there's three different things that we're putting together with an ore, we need three of these pistons, like so, one off the ground. So this will be the A's, 
Uh, then two blocks away, do the same. Just one block off the ground, three across, like so. This will be our B line, <laughs> B line of distance. Uh, then finally we need C. C, not D. Uh, then working from that, like so, we need line of stone like that. These, this redstone line will turn on and off the pistons. So if we just stick some, stick a lever, like so. Uh, next, I believe next step that I'm going to take care of is to just put some lines here so we can tell what these are actually going to end up being. So this will be AC. This will be BC. I'm going to do that. And this will be AB. Just for my reference. So the A line is going to be used for these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a obsidian block there because A is not going to be used for the first for this line. And I also need a knot of A here. Simple way to do that. We're just going to lower this one down, put a redstone torch underneath. And we have this. So when we pull the lever, third one's up. Now the first one's up. Kind of an interesting effect. Uh, we're going to do the same with the other ones, so the next line, B is not used in this line, so we're going to put the obsidian block, and we need the not B here, so we lower this one, place the stone block, redstone, and the torch. There we go, again, doing the alternation. Uh, next one is for line C, what do we need for line C? So we don't need the third line. Place the obsidian. Oh, that's gonna be a pain to clean up. Okay. H pose one. H pose two. Set. There. Obsidian block's gone. Uh, we need the not C to be in the middle line. So again, clear the block. Stone. Dust. And the torch. So again. Those are just sort of move drops. So those are now alternating as well. So, so far so good. Next step is wherever we see a piston, we need to put two sand blocks, like so. Gravel works as well. So we're going to do that. Uh, the next step is to do this. We're going to do this. I'm going to put some stone blocks here at this level, so one above the redstone lines. The reason for this is this is where the redstone and the repeaters are going to go to do the ore gate part. Next, we're going to. I'm just going to use wooden planks wherever there's the obsidian, because these are going to be letting the redstone signal go through pretty much no matter what. We're almost done. This will be our master line. It's going to stay on pretty much no matter what. Then we're going to alternate redstone torches and redstone repeaters. Like so. Pretty much repeat this pattern all the way to the end. Doesn't matter where you start with as long as there's no as long as it alternates repeater, dust, repeater, dust, repeater. Like so. Then just to show the output, if I can place the blocks right, grab the redstone lamp, get rid of that, and there we go. So that happens to be our completed logic unit, sort of a 
I've been calling it a Boolean logic unit, kind of like a arithmetic logic unit in a computer. Kind of a unique idea. So now, as I clear up the drops, I'm now going to bring up this again. Put it off to the side so that we can look at with our tiny Minecraft screen if we got the test cable to work right. So the only two states where the lamp's going to stay off is when they're all on or when they're all off. Kind of like a miniature XOR gate. So this should be on. Yep. Uh, that should be on. Yep. Still on. Yep. Now with 100 should be on. Right? Yep. It's the fourth one down. Fifth one down. Uh, then we turn this one on, should be on. This one should be on, with the 110. And then the last one, which is the last one on that truth table to the left, 111 should be off. And so far, it passes inspection. So, this is a logic unit that follows that particular rule set. So, pretty good. I'm impressed with it, uh, and I'm happy with how it turned out. So. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, do voice them in the comments. Uh, I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, if I have to do a follow-up video, I will. Hopefully I won't have to. Uh, but thank you for so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, hopefully I didn't go completely over your head. Uh, but uh, I will put what I have with these four different cases up for download. Uh, if you look, all of them should have down here next to the line A, what each line is supposed to do. Uh, it's just an OR gate with all of those. So hopefully this helps. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, Hypercrafting folks.